This is lesson 6.6, .6, combining transformations of sinusoidal functions. In this lesson, the focus is on applying all transformations to graphs of these sinusoidal functions. So the first thing I want you to recall is what you know about transformations. And so if we have such function, uh, a of f of b of x minus c plus d, I just want to remind you what all these different things do. I think you're likely familiar with them, but it's, it's good to review again. Remember A, we explored in our previous lesson, that's going to be your vertical stretch to compress. Um, B is going to be your horizontal stretch compress. Remember that what we need to do is we need to take the uh, reciprocal of that one. And so I kind of think of it as, as being opposite. So if you see a, a bigger number, a number greater than one, it actually means it's going to be a, uh, a compression. Um, whether if you have a number that's uh, between zero and one, it's going to be a, uh, a stretch like so. Okay. Um, C, as we know, that moves us left or right. You guys are sometimes used to seeing that uh, letter as an H. That moves you left or right. We think of the opposite right here. And then D moves us up or down. That's our vertical translation. Uh, we don't have to worry about doing anything the opposite. All right. So um, as you can imagine, uh, we take a look at example like number one right here, and we see that we're going to um, be dealing with all these different things, right? And so what I first want you to do um, to get us kind of used to this is in this first example, we're just going to try to write down uh, what each of these, um, these numbers basically indicate here in relation to the graph of y is equal to cosine of x, all right? So assuming we know that graph um, very well, how is this going to get moved, all right? So let's start with uh, the first piece of information we're given. We're given that a is equal to one quarter. So if A is equal to one quarter, then we know that this is going to be vertically compressed because that number is between zero and one. And of course it's by a factor of one quarter. Okay, good. Next thing we have is we have a B value of three. And so just like I said, because that value is greater than one, it's actually going to be a horizontal, so we'll say horizontally compressed, right, you kind of do the opposite of it, and when I say opposite, what I mean um, right here is we take the reciprocal, and so it's going to be by a factor of one-third, okay, and the last two ones are fairly easy to deal with, uh, in this case we have c, c is equal to negative pi over six, and so that is going to translate uh, pi over six units, and because it's a plus, we know we're going to kind of go in the opposite direction, the negative direction, so we'd say left. And then lastly, we have our D value. Sometimes we refer to that as K at the end right there, but uh, D is equal to 2. And so we would say that this is going to translate uh, 2 units, and we don't have to worry about doing the opposite here, so it's 2 units up. Okay, so um, it's fairly easy to identify these A, B, C, and D values right here, but it's actually a little bit more interesting when you have to physically go and graph these. All right, so let's go to example two where we're going to look at graphing um, that same function. Okay, so to sketch the graph of this function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you two different strategies. The first strategy is going to be somewhat new for you, and the second strategy I'm going to get you to use that word pair that you can see uh, down at the bottom, which we've used uh, when we're dealing with log functions and other functions. The first thing, though, that I want to do is I want us to graph the regular graph of y is equal to cosine of x. And so I'm going to do that in um, my, uh, my pink pen right here. And so we know that we have a dot right here. So I'm going to try to make the dots really nice and big because we're going to be moving those ones. And it goes through right here at pi over 2. And then we get this point like so. And it looks approximately like that. Okay. And then we're going to go in the opposite direction. We get this point, this point, this point, and this point. And then if we connect those dots, we get something ballpark of a function that looks like so. Okay, we were just trying to go from negative 2 pi to 2 pi, so that's why I stopped right at those points. Okay, so what I'm going to suggest that we do for this function is because we have the um, the one quarter and the three, I'm going to deal with the uh, the one quarter first. Okay, so if I deal with the one quarter first, I'm going to do I'm going to try to do this um, systematically. But I'm going to deal with this one quarter in green. So that's going to be the green color that I do right here. Okay, so if I take my green pen, I'm going to take all of those points and I'm going to compress them by a factor of a quarter. Okay, so a quarter of one, if that's a half of one, then a quarter of one is going to be right there. Uh, a quarter times zero, those ones aren't going to go anywhere. And so we'd get something that looks just like so. Okay, all the way through like that. So hopefully that's not uh, rocket science. And so if we connect those dots, you get a function. And so this would be one quarter. 
maybe I'll just label this too. So this one's going to be y is equal to 1 quarter, the cosine of x, and maybe I should just label the pink one instead here, y is equal to cosine of x, okay? So we're kind of making our way uh, down this line in order to get our, uh, our function, okay? And so now that I've done that green one, I've accomplished that, let's go now and deal with, uh, I'll make this blue, I'm going to graph both of these, okay? So I've already dealt with the one quarter, now I need to deal with the three. So all my points uh, need to be compressed by a factor of one third. So if this point is over at one, two, three units over, which I agree is pi over two, that's going to be right over here at that point there. Okay. This one, because it's uh, already on the x-axis, that's not going to change. Okay. This value right here, that's over at one, two, three, four, five, six. A third of six is going to be at this two points over. Okay. This point right here, that's at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or three pi over two, is going to be right here, and this point is going to be right there. So if you can kind of start to see the pattern. Okay, so doing it in the same direction, we'd have something that looks like this, and something that looks like this, and finally right here. Okay, so let's label that graph now. So the graph of the blue one right here will be y is equal to one quarter cosine of three. Okay, and now we're sitting pretty. So we have this little tiny graph right there, right? And I appreciate that I need to do it from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. We're going to extend that after because I think we can see the pattern. But now what I want you to do with that is we need to do our last two transformations. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to move it uh, up two units and, uh, and then we'll do the, this over one uh, last, okay? So let's do this in yellow, this part right here, okay? And so the yellow is accomplishing all of these things. That's why I'm trying to kind of underline it like so. And so we'll get our pen. So I'm just going to take all these blue points. I'm going to move it up two units. So it's a little bit complicated because remember we were at a quarter right here. And so if you go up two units from there, that's going to be two and a quarter. Okay. This one was at zero, so that's going to be nicely at uh, two right there. And then hopefully you can just kind of see the pattern. The pattern is going to go like this. Okay. So we move that one up. 2, and we'll label this as y is equal to 1 quarter cosine of 3x and then plus 2. The last thing we have to do, and we'll do this one in red right here, is we're going to do the entire function. All right, And so maybe I'll just label the entire function just so that it's clear, is 1 quarter cosine of 3x plus pi over 6 plus 2. Okay, so we're going to take this function that we have right here, and we're simply just going to move it over. Uh, in the negative direction, pi over 6, so that just means every point is going to move over one of these little hash marks, like so. Okay, so you see every point has just moved over one, and so we have our function like that. Now, the last thing I just need you to consider is that because we have um, only, because our period's been kind of uh, shortened right here, uh, the graph is not going from negative 2 pi to 2 pi right there, and so let's just continue this graph on in the same way. Uh, we can see the pattern, hopefully. It's going to look like this. Okay. And I guess I went a little bit past 2 pi there, but uh, keep on going. So we need to go down, and then that's my minimum, and then my maximum, and then my minimum, and then my maximum, and 2 pi would end right there. Okay? And so that would be the graph of y is equal to 1 quarter cosine of 3 of x plus pi over 2. And so if we graph this, you would have something that looks like that. Okay? Okay, now if you recall, I said there was a second way of doing this. And the second way of doing this, it kind of relates to what we've done in previous units when we've been doing transformations. And it's simply that we need to look at the original graph, y is equal to cosine of x, then we need to look at the, the new function right here, and then come up with our corresponding ordered pair. All right. So if you take a look at the points that we have right here, um, notice that we are going by um, if our original graph. Remember our original graph was this pink one right here. The values that were kind of most important were going up by increments of, um, of pi over 2. So what I'm going to start at right here for my ordered pairs is I'm going to start um, at this point at uh, negative 2 pi, and then I'm going to have uh, negative um, 3 pi over 2, and then I'm going to have, where is it, negative pi right here, and work my way in that direction, okay? So I'm just going to set that up with you. Um, there's a number of order pairs that we're going to fill in, right? So 
Uh, there's my ordered pair, and I'm going to start at negative 2 pi. And then we're going to go negative 3 pi over 2. And then I'm going to have negative pi. We're going to keep on going until we get all the way to where we need to be, which is at positive 2 pi. Okay, so we're finally at 0 right here. And we know the graph of uh, cosine x would be 0, 1, so we can cheat and put that one in right away. And then we're keeping on going by pi over 2. And so if you don't like this way, that is fine. Um, but uh, you're going to have to do one of the two uh, methods that I'm showing you right here, okay? So I'm partial to the one that I just did, although this one relates to kind of um, how you guys have been doing uh, the majority of this uh, transformations in this course, okay? So if we fill this in right here now, at negative 2 pi, what's the value that we have? Well, of course, at negative 2 pi, it's at 1. So it's going to go 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, and keep on going in that fashion. So I'm just going to take the liberty of filling all those in. So as I said, we go 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. So we hit it that nicely. And then we go back to 0. And then we're at negative 1 and 0. And finally, we finish here at 1. Okay. Now. Last thing we have to do here is we have to come up with this corresponding order pair. So we just had x, y, but now what's it going to be for this one right here? Well, if it, this one right here, what we know is that we have a b value of 3, and so that means I'm going to have 1 third x, right, because I take the reciprocal of it, and then what is my phase shift? My phase shift is going to be minus pi over 6, so that's going to be my x coordinate. And my y coordinate, well, I'm multiplying it by 1 quarter, so I have 1 quarter y, and then I'm simply just adding 2. Okay, so what you would have to do, and I'm going to go through this relatively quickly, but you just have to feed these values in, and then you would get these corresponding points that I have right here. My my red graph right there, right, would correspond to that. So all these ordered pairs are going to make that red graph that I have right here. Okay, so you start by putting in negative 2 pi in for x, and so if you could visualize what that would be, that would give you negative 2 pi over 3. If you get a common denominator, that'd be negative 4 pi. Uh, over 6, now that you've got the common denominator, and then negative 4 pi over 6 minus a pi over 6 gives you negative 5 pi over 6. Okay, And then our y value here is a little bit easier. You take 1 and you multiply by a quarter, which gives you a quarter, and then you get 2.25, or uh, if you wanted to express as a decimal, you'd have, uh, what's that going to be, um, 9 over 4. Okay, And if you take a look at negative 5 pi over 6, so negative 5 pi over 6, and what did I say the other value was? 2.25. So negative 5 pi would be 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5 pi over 6. We have this value at 2.25. Okay? And then what I would just encourage you to do is fill in the values right here, and you'll see that it corresponds to the points um, that we have on that graph. Okay? All right, so that's one way of doing it. I think you're going to like the first uh, way that I showed you. Okay, the last thing that I wanted you to help me with is looking back at our graph, um, or, or this equation perhaps, is to tell me uh, some of the characteristics. And so the first thing we know is we know about our amplitude. And the amplitude we can just gauge off of the, uh, the leading coefficient there, so the amplitude is one quarter. Um, the next thing we need to uh, discuss is what is the period. And uh, if we look right here, um, for instance, uh, remember we're referencing the red graph right here. Well, how many points are there between um, these two? So we'd have, um, let's say this would be uh, pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi, 4 pi over 6 would be the period. So I'll write that as 4 pi over 6. And then, of course, what you could do is you could um, reduce that, right? And so I just picked two maximum points to um, compare, but you could pick any two corresponding points. Uh, the phase shift, of course, is how uh, far are we moving left or right right here. And so we say the phase shift, okay, my horizontal translation is uh, negative pi over 6. Uh, are there any zeros for that function? I think you'll recall that there are no zeros. It's been moved up so far. It doesn't cross the x-axis. And then the uh, domain. What do we have as possible x values for this? Well, the graph is going infinitely to the left and right. It's a sinusoidal function. And then the, uh, the range. Well, what y values do we have right there? Well, if you recall, the highest y value we had, if we go back up to the graph, um, for this red guy was at uh, 2.25, and the lowest one was at 1.75. So everything has to be in between those two values. Okay, so you can express as a decimal or as a fraction, whatever you feel. All right, example two says, write an equation for the sinusoidal function graph below in terms of sine of x. Now, this is a big deal right here, the sine of x. That's giving us a hint. We know some properties about the graph of sine of x. The properties about the graph of sine of x that we know is that it goes through this point at 0, 0. We know that it has an amplitude of 1. 
and we know that has a period of 2 pi. Those are some big things, okay? Now, if I get you to look at this graph, one of the first things I would notice is that something must be going on here in terms of d. Why I say that is that the amplitude from here to here looks like it's 4, but then from here to here is 6. So I know that this graph must have been shifted up. And so if you take a look, if I was to draw my midline right where I've drawn this blue line right here, you notice now that my amplitude is 5 and 5, all right? So I would get you to make this point. The center line, and that's that dotted line I just wrote, the center line is at y is equal to 1. And so what can we say? We now know that d must be equal to 1, okay? Um, so that is the first part that we've done. Next thing is that I just talked about what the amplitude was going to be. And so the amplitude, how many uh, points above the center line? 5 and then 5. So we'd say the amplitude is uh, A is equal to 5. So we have um, these two characteristics all figured out. Uh, what else can we do? Let's talk about the period of this function. Okay. So the period of this function, what it gets you to do is maybe find uh, two points that are corresponding uh, nicely, that are hitting on lattice points. And so if you take a look at these, they have pi over 6, they have pi over 3, pi over 2. Well, what are these increments going up by? Well, if this is pi over 6, that must be half of pi over 6. And half of pi over 6 is pi over 12. So this point right here is at pi over 12. And then if you count over, if that's pi over 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 pi over 12. And so if you were to take 9 pi over 12, so maybe I'll just write this right here. If you were to take 9 pi over 12 and subtract pi over 12, that gives you our solution right here for our period, which is 8 pi over 12. And the last thing I'd get you to realize with 8 pi over 12 is that that could be reduced to be 2 pi over 3. Okay, So that would be my period. All right. uh, what else do we need to do? Well, we need to attack this phase shift. Okay, And that will be our last thing. And so the phase shift. Well, what do we know about phase shift? We know that the phase shift um, it, it can correspond to where the point was at 0, 0. And here's what I mean by that. We know that the graph of y is equal to sine x up here goes through this point at 0, 0. It's obviously been translated up, but it should have gone through this point. Well, if you take a look, if I was just to move this back over right here, it would go up like we'd expect to. And so how many units has that moved over? Remember, this is uh, pi over 12, 2 pi over 12, 3 pi over 12. All right. So we know that it has a phase shift right here that we can say is at 3 pi over 12, which is equal to pi over 4. Okay, we can now write down our uh, equation. We have y is equal to 5, right? That's my a value. We have, that's my amplitude, if you will. Sine, and this is the only part that might be a little bit complicated. It's going to be sine of 3. And the reason is, is remember what the period is normally for a, a function. The period is normally 2 pi. But this one is 2 pi over 3. Well, what's the opposite of dividing by 3? If you take the reciprocal of it, it is a multiplication of 3. And then we had our phase shift was pi over 4, so we're going to have minus pi over 4. And if you remember that this graph, my midline was moved up one unit, so we have plus 1. Okay? So that concludes this lesson. Uh, we got to take a look at how, like in this example, you can be given a function and come up with the, um, the equation for it, or uh, how you can be given uh, the equation and then graph uh, the corresponding function. Okay? Thank you very much.